The term data center of tomorrow has me a little bit perplexed. And everybody's starting to use it now, and it's got various definitions of what it means, but fundamentally what it means is the data center of tomorrow is going to incorporate this crazy notion of cloud. So I get all that. The issue that I take with it is that the data center of tomorrow has needs and demands on it today. And so that to me is a little bit more interesting to talk about and to think about. And so how do we make the leap from the data center of, I'll call it even yesterday, because today's is really yesterday's by and large. And how do we cross that chasm to get it to what the data center of tomorrow is? First and foremost, I think you got to think about the data center of tomorrow without walls because your operation already today, whether you know it or not, or whether you're okay with it or not, extends way beyond the four walls of your primary data center. It's out in the ether. You are running services from Salesforce or some other SaaS provider. Your employees have data in Box or Dropbox or a myriad of other places. There is stuff going on on Google and Amazon, most likely right now. And most of those things are outside of the purview of control of IT. So the data center of tomorrow, or the virtual data center, or the elastic data center of tomorrow that was within your control, is going to be able to finally become an on-demand set of services to your line of businesses. And all those services that I previously described and a thousand others that we haven't even thought of yet are going to have to be able to allow our line of business to go to IT and say, I want this set of services, and IT has to be able to respond to that. So if we break it down even further and forget the application sets or the workload sets, Let's talk about where we are today and why it's mostly not a reality to be able to do that. Everybody's got the ability now to virtualize servers. We get great utilization out of our server assets because of that. We can move workloads, encapsulated applications and their data sets around. That's good and bad, but it's wonderful if you look at it simply just from the server perspective. We're moving into an era where networks are going to be virtualized and just as intelligent. The whole concept of SDN, or Software Defined Networking, is the same principle as we went through with servers. With servers, you used to have a physical asset, a box, that ran normally an application. And if that application wasn't being used, that asset still existed, we still had to pay for it, we still had to manage it, but it didn't do anything for us. Networking is largely the exact same thing. We have to buy a million ports and plumb everything together so that everything has the possible connectivity, even though at any given time, traffic may only be flowing to 2% of our overall network, whether it's local or wide area. So 98% of our network is we pay for it and we manage it and we write it off and we support it, but it's never really providing any value to the business. The construct of SDN is to bring us much closer to that of the server virtualization era, which is to say we can get way more utilization of our networks by tearing up or building up and tearing down connections from where they need to be from point A to point B to point C because that's what we need at this point in time and then releasing those assets back to the uh, I'll say great pool of resources that is the network to be used by somebody else later on. Storage is still by and large 7,000 years old comparatively to that. Storage in the data center is inelastic. It speaks what it's spoken to, it does IOs as fast as you give it, there's very few even systems that have any quality of service. And so one of the problems that you find with getting from data center of yesterday to data center of tomorrow, for example, right now, is we become IO constricted. And the reason we are IO constricted is that as transient workloads, because we enable that with server virtualization, move around from A to B to C, Storage at the end, which houses the only thing that matters, which is data, isn't able to respond or alter its life form, if you will, to react to changes that come onto it. It's a manual, labor-intensive process. And we usually don't find out we have a problem until we have a problem. The predictive nature is poor at best. The data center of the future, you've got to be able to scale in any dimension. 
you've got to be able to scale, you've got to be able to be autonomic. You've got to be able to take advantage of all of the different tiers of assets. Flash is real, it's awesome, but you're probably not going to put it everywhere. Really cheap and deep cold storage is real and it's awesome, but you're not going to be able to satisfy all your performance requirements if that's all you use. Everywhere in the middle, there's 700 different subsystems along the way, and finally, we're going to add cloud to the mix, because if you don't think you're going to have off-site cloud-oriented capacity, you're crazy. You already do. What we need is to create a data infrastructure as intelligent and as amorphous as our network is going to be when we layer in SDN, and that our servers are going to be when we layer in virtualization. Until that point, until all of those three elements are as intelligent as each other and ideally ultimately completely integrated, then can we worry about orchestration extending way beyond our four walls, way out into the cloud for everything, server assets around the world put together and torn down as required, network assets around the world put together and torn down as required, and data assets or storage that are doing all the same things, making sure that we are delivering a quality of service to a specific workload, irrespective of where that workload executes or when that workload executes, and creating a stable environment where IT can deliver perfectly predictable performance, availability, all the characteristics that matter, price and cost, manageability, all of those things that matter on a constant basis, instantly to the line of business. Just something to think about.